Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Right now, thousands of migrants are still waiting for Border Patrol to process them, many of them waiting in a field in Eagle Pass. Yeah, it's been some unbelievable scenes there. Some have been there for hours, even overnight. Our Daniela Ibarra spent the past two days on the border. Daniela, local authorities say these are record numbers, right? Yeah, it's really crazy to see it for yourself. In the last hour, we learned from DPS over 4,000 migrants crossed into the U.S., and that's just in the Del Rio sector. It's pretty consistent with the numbers we've seen over the past few days, but people who live and work in Eagle Pass say this surge is different than what they've ever seen. Now, to give you the full magnitude of the crowd, we put up our drone yesterday. You can see those waves of people separated into corrals. Now, those glimmers of silver that you're looking at, those are aluminum blankets. It's what the migrants are using to stay warm. With the focus on the migrants, Border Patrol has shifted their resources to just processing them. Some, of, some people report waiting hours to cross the bridge to Eagle Pass from Mexico. One business owner we spoke with in Eagle Pass says it's causing trouble for employees and customers who live in Mexico, but that's not what her heart is focused on. This is beyond commerce and how much money I, that we can make or the businesses can make. It's, it's, a, it's a humanitarian situation. Many of those we spoke with in Eagle Pass say they want the federal government's help. Congressman Tony Gonzalez sent congressional leaders a letter yesterday. He says the feds need to step up and help secure the border. Now, Daniela, every person there has a different story to tell. Now, where are they coming from? Well, Border Patrol says they're really coming from all over the world. Earlier this week, they did put out a list of all the countries these migrants are coming from. A lot of them are coming from Latin American countries. Some of them are hoping to be granted asylum. And Daniela, we saw from that video there, obviously there are several people there and they're just waiting there for hours in those fields. What exactly have you noticed that they're doing? Really, they're just sitting and waiting. We were kept so far back from them this time that we weren't able to talk with any of them. We did see a couple of kids running around, people yelling and cheering whenever they got to get processed by Border Patrol and people huddling together to stay warm. We also saw a few migrants who had to be rushed to get medical help. Some of them were being carried by others to ambulances. Now, some of the migrants I've spoke with, spoken with in the past, they've told me it's taken them weeks, even months to get here to the U.S. And they've told me that when they cross the border, they don't know how long it'll take to where they're planning to go. All right, Daniela Ibarra, thank you very much for joining us. And that is uh, some incredible, great reporting there from Daniela and our photographer, Gavin Nesbitt, down there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to some other news. Medina County Sheriff investigators warning drivers to be on alert for random shots coming from a moving vehicle. Investigators say there have been at least 11 reports from incidents that started around November 27th. They say the shooter is using some sort of air rifle or a BB gun. The shootings reported so far have been in Natalia, Lacoste, and Castroville area. Victims have started sharing their stories on social media in hopes of warning the community to be on alert. A Crime Stoppers reward is being offered for this case. Call the Medina County Sheriff's Office if you have any information. Construction on the Uvalde School District's newest campus is on hold for now. The Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation says the project is going through a second bidding process. In a statement, it says the decision was made to, quote, ensure the best possible cost of construction, end quote. However, the statement goes on to say that additional fundraising is needed to begin construction. The district broke ground on the school back in October. At the time, the foundation said it had raised 75% of the necessary funds when the school opens, it will replace Robb Elementary, which is set to be demolished. Another San Antonio area school will close its doors. Trustees in South San Antonio ISD have voted to close West Campus High School. The vote was based on the superintendent's recommendation. West Campus will close in 2024-2025 school year. Like many other local school districts, South San Antonio has experienced financial hardships. Its board voted earlier this year to close Athens, Athens Elementary, Kindred Elementary School, and Kazin Middle School. All right, let's take you outside with live cam. And uh, Mia, starting out kind of gray and dreary. Yep. I know obviously a lot of people are paying close attention to that Christmas forecast. Of course, yep. And we still are expecting the potential for a few showers to roam through even Bear County in South Central Texas today. We'll see a cool front move in on Christmas Eve. That's actually going to clear out the moisture, though, and make for a windy but nice Christmas day. So we've got plenty to talk about when it comes to the weather here in South Central Texas over the next several days. Let's get you the latest here at Authority 
radar. We are seeing some isolated, very light rain push across the far eastern portions of Bear County. Just moved through the Windcrest as well as Shirts area, crossing over I-35 that's headed north into Comal County, just to the east of Bull Verde. You can see we're not the only area dealing with some of that. A few more light showers near Gonzales, way out east, and some additional rain that's really been the sweet spot across portions of the Hill Country, Bandera County, stretching up to Kerrville, even Bernie, right along the I-10 corridor. So not a bad idea to keep the umbrella with you this afternoon should you need to use it because again we're going to call it about a 30 to 40 percent potential for a few more light showers to move through the cloud cover generally sticks with us today as well temperatures pretty mild topping off in the mid to upper 60s here in san antonio throughout the rest of the week we are expecting additional rounds of morning patchy fog and drizzle that will lead in the potential to find a few more passing showers each afternoon with mild temperatures into christmas eve our next chance or our next best chance i should say to find some more notable rain, maybe an isolated storm is Saturday night and early Christmas Eve morning. But then we see that front move through and we're going to clear things out from west to east just ahead of Christmas Day. So Christmas Day next Monday is looking pleasant, low humidity, cooler temperatures with some sunshine, but it also is looking to be a windy start as well. So we'll talk all about it and get you those details coming up a little bit later on, guys. Thank you very much, Mia. Well, it's a very busy travel day, not just on the roads, but in the air as well. We have nearly 49,000 planes just in the air today. And uh, earlier we were looking at some delays and cancellations at San Antonio International Airport, according to FlightAware. And uh, last check here, I was noticing uh, not too bad it was as far as uh, our travel here locally. So that is some good news for people headed out to the airport right now. And this is FlightAware's misery map. It shows what airports across the country are seeing the most issues at this hour. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too bad, mostly in those eastern kind of west coast cities where obviously a lot of people are traveling to or getting just around the country. Well, the festivities for a lot of people are set to begin as soon as their flights are over. San Antonio's airport is busier than ever these days with people heading to family and friends for the holidays. As Katrina Weber reports, as she shows us, that includes the mass Xmas exodus involving members of the military. United, thank you guys so much for your service. All active U.S. military personnel, you're welcome to pre-board at this time. They arrived by the bus load for what would be their last formation of the year. Members of the U.S. military lined up, this time inside the airport, ready for some R&R &R with family and friends. I'm excited because this is the first time I've been away from them from them for so long. So we've all been talking about like going home and like this is the moment, like this is the time we've been ex most excited for since we left for basic. The military calls this holiday block leave an exodus of thousands in uniform flying home for the holidays along with everyone else. That means extra big crowds of travelers. I'm nervous, I've never really like flown by myself before so it's like weird trying to figure everything out but I'm glad I got here early. Uh, busier than I thought. Lynette Wynn's luggage let everyone know she was on her way, just not as swiftly as she planned. Her focus, though, was on her fellow passengers and fatigues. I hope they're going home, not shipping out. They're all so young. Lord protect them. I was yeah, here. We've been here. We're over you there. Are We've been right? here. Okay. So let us get back in our line so we can get out of here. For others, fatigue simply set in. Our We're ready to drop and We've been here for over an hour. Yeah. Anxious to get where they were going. After all the long lines, this is definitely the kind of board you want to see. All the flights on time to get you home. We went to Virginia. I want to drive. West Virginia. Baltimore. Oh, New York. Different destinations, but with the same goal to spend the holidays surrounded by loved ones. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, hopefully Lynette uh, made it to where she needed to go and those other people as well. Well, it was an early Christmas for some of the top players across the city of San Antonio. We'll look back at an action-packed National Signing Day. People visiting Helotus will now be able to learn more about its rich history thanks to a project by the Historical Society of Helotus. We explore Old Town Helotus after the break. Welcome back. Well, Interpretive Science at Old Town Helotus aims to help visitors understand its history. I got a look at some of the historic buildings there and learned what other plans the Historical Society of Helotus has. And it was a western town, so cowboys went through and, the, and did their cattle drives through right through this area right here. The, the road was much smaller then, um, but this was the main road. This was Bandera Road. 
not the highway. Cynthia Massey knows a lot of the history of Old Town Helotus. So this was the Jaunty Four country store. She even wrote a book about it. Old Town was established in 1881, and it was part originally of the old uh, Marnock Ranch. Arnold Guger, who was a Swiss-American, uh, had just gotten married to uh, to Amalia Banke, and she and, and he, he bought this land, 110 acres, this whole area, and he established our first uh, general store. Oh, I love this antique shop. As president of the Historical Society of Helotus, Massey says their latest project is honoring the history of the town. Some of these buildings have been in here longer than 100 years. Eight signs were placed in front of historic buildings like this one. Today, it's a women's retail shop, but it was once the Helotus General Store. The general store is where everyone would uh, would gather, would come and find the news of the town. With funding by the Helotus Economic Development Corporation, they produce these signs. So what was this before? It was a grocery store. And what was unique about this originally is that it, it was right during the Depression that Mr. and Mrs. Riggs owned it. They're the ones who built it. And they were known to be very generous to people. So when people would come in and didn't have money, they would barter. They would take jewelry uh, or whatever that the person had if they didn't have money. The Historical Society of Helotus also helped bring walking tour maps for visitors. Massey is proud of this project and looks forward to future ones. I just think it's very important for us to always remember history, to remember where we came from. Now, Massey says they hope to add more signs like these to other historical buildings and add walking tours in the future. All right, very cool. Taking a look at live cam right now. A little bit gray out there, <laughs> but a lot of people, Mia, looking forward to Christmas, maybe hitting the roads, obviously, for travel. Yep. There's a lot going on. There certainly is. Yeah, this morning it was pretty damp out there in spots. We had patchy drizzle. We had some fog and some mist, and generally we're expecting daily rounds of that in the morning through at least Sunday. And then we see the front move in. That's going to clear us out for Christmas Day. All right, a quick look here at the aquifer level for this Thursday, down two tenths of a foot, 638.3 the reading today. Not great news in terms of the pollen count. Mountain cedar still elevated in the high category. Molds are present, but at least they are low. Something we'll be monitoring leading up to Christmas Day, as well as that forecast. We'll get you all the details after the break. Well, the year is not over just yet, but we already know that 2023 has been one for the books, especially in the weather department. Remember those crazy hot summer days that we had? Yes, we, we I, remember. I don't want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to remember, though. But Mia Montgomery and Stefania Jimenez recap all the records we broke and give us a look at how we can prepare for severe weather next year. Here's a clip from their special, which you can see on our website right now. We have milder weather now, but let's rewind a bit to the summer of 2023. How would you describe it? It was really horrible. Some even say? Unbearable. The temperatures in South Central Texas broke record after record. We've had eight days in which we hit 105 or higher. It marked our 60th triple digit day that we have seen so far this year. The hottest month ever recorded in San Antonio with an average temp of 90.6. Everyone and everything was affected from homeowners to businesses and people who work outside in the elements. Even thinking back to 2021, we had the winter storm, except then it was snow and ice that staggered Texans. 10 degrees here in San Antonio. Both cases of extreme weather taught us preparation is key. CPS Energy says it's under orders to begin rotating outages. Local groups and agencies are having those conversations. How do we work with those stakeholders that, that already work with uh, persons that are you know, 65 and older? or they have a medical condition, people with disabilities, or individuals who are homebound. While we can't predict severe weather months before it happens, we can do our best to prepare when we're not in a weather emergency. So let's get ready. Mia and Stefania go over all the ways you can prepare your homes and stay healthy no matter how 
hot or cold it gets. And you could check out this QR code right here or go to our website, YouTube, and also KSAT Plus app to check out this awesome segment right here. And I remember over the summer trying to go run during like five o'clock and I was like, yeah, I just turned back around. When it, was it was like, it's not happening. It was so bad between just the heat in and of itself. And then you factored in the humidity. I mean, we had the hottest heat index value that we've ever recorded this year. I mean, seriously, it's just so crazy to think about how many records we did break this year. Thankfully, temperatures have cooled down a bit since we moved through those summer months. Definitely a bit more mild out there. And we are still monitoring some rain out there on authority radar this Thursday day afternoon. Take a look at the latest scans here. Still monitoring some isolated light rain that is pushed through far eastern Bear County. That's pushed through the Selma Garden Ridge area now moving into southern Comal County. That's going to continue working northward near the Smithson Valley area over the next 30 minutes or so. Taking a look farther off to the east, a few more light showers out there near Gonzales. That's still working its way farther northward and we have even more activity across portions of the hill country near Bandera that stretches over into western Bandera County as well. Lakey, Concan, even Uvalde seeing some of that light, even a few pockets of moderate rain that continues to work its way in from the south. So as we mentioned a little bit earlier, a good idea to at least plan on keeping the rain gear handy should you briefly need to use it throughout the remainder of this afternoon and even into the evening, for we do still have the potential and the expectation to see some additional light showers push across the region. You can see by two o'clock. That's exactly what we're still expected to find just dotted across portions of South Central Texas. If you're stepping out later this evening, closer to San Antonio, New Braunfels, even Floresville, Lavernia could see a few more out that way. Another batch is possible moving in from the southwest later on this evening by about seven to eight o'clock, and we're still going to keep that widely separated chance in the forecast through the overnight and by first thing tomorrow, cloud cover yet again, very similar to what we saw earlier this morning. Some some patchy mist, some drizzle, some fog will lightly greet you out the door first thing tomorrow. Maybe a few more isolated light showers. Some more notable rain certainly possible tomorrow. We'll call it about a 30% potential after that morning drizzle. Today about a 40% chance. Still another 40% potential into your Saturday. Our next best chance though moves in Saturday night and early Sunday morning. So early Christmas Eve ahead of our next cool front. You can see after it moves in that's actually going to dry us out for Christmas Day on Monday. So let's talk about that setup. You can see right now we're not the only ones dealing with some rain this afternoon that stretches up and just west of the I-35 corridor. This activity is actually associated with the disturbance out ahead of this big area of low pressure. It's actually been producing some rain and storms across Southern California near Los Angeles. This low pressure system is going to continue working eastward here over the next several days. So while we're dealing Dealing with the morning drizzle, the morning fog and mist, and a few afternoon passing showers. Here comes that next best chance for rain early Sunday morning. That associated with that front. Notice it'll push through here into the day on Sunday, gradually clearing us out from west to east. And then after that, we see cooler and drier air work in for your Christmas day on Monday. So on Sunday, a little bit warmer. We're expected to top off in the low 70s after we start to see a little bit more sunshine return. It'll be chilly first thing Monday morning starting off near about 50 degrees. Temperatures climbing into the mid 60s. Low humidity. It will be a bit windy and the sunshine is going to return on Christmas Day as well. Unfortunately, no sunshine right now. Looking a little gray out there. 63 degrees. The current temperature here in San Antonio 65 over at Stinson 64 in Hondo. Again this afternoon mid to upper 60s expected a little bit warmer for those that can maybe manage to find a peak of sunshine or two for us really in general. The cloud cover is expected to hold on throughout the day. More of the same tomorrow into Saturday and then after that front clears the area on Sunday, Christmas Day and the days following that next week looking very pleasant, especially with that low humidity. So some Christmas movies in the forecast. There you go. A little hot <laughs> chocolate yes. on the couch. Yes, all of it. All right. Well, that's a good one. Favorite Christmas movie. Mine is Just Friends. Ryan Reynolds. Amy Swartz. I think I got to go with Home Alone. I <laughs> love too. Home yeah. Alone. Uh, Always. Good. Always good options there. <laughs> all right. Coming up next in sports, it was a big day for some big time local athletes. We're going to take a look back at some National Signing Day highlights. And what's the latest on Wemby's status? We need Wemby, okay, for tonight's game. 
Spurs game. We'll let you know on the other side of this break. Well, Christmas came early for some of the top athletes in our area as the early National Signing Day was held for some of the city's top football players. Let's take you out of Veterans Memorial High School. See right there, James People running back there signed with Ohio State. Yes, the Ohio State. James is a big time running back and will take his skills to the Big Ten Conference and one of the top programs in the country. There's so many factors that play into it being the Ohio State. Um, not just the people, but like the area, Columbus, my family's up there. Um, everything is just almost like a perfect storm, you know, with, um, with everything going on right there. I mean, they're super high on me. I was super high on them as well. Um, the opportunities are there. And I mean, if there's an opportunity to go there, I'm going to go get it. All right, look at my man with the shades there. Okay, over at Clemens High School, four-star safety Paul Menke Jr. made his decision in front of friends and family. And we're going to check it right there. Yes, he is going to Washington to play football for the Huskies. His parents actually went to Washington's rivals, Washington State, and his dad played quarterback and tight end for the Cougars back in the late 90s. So what does Paul Jr. have to say? I think it's really cool. Uh, it's kind of weird playing for the opposite team now because uh, – the Huskies rival the, the Cougars, right. so I guess it's a little in-house rivalry now, but uh, it's, it's really good. I, my grandparents want, uh, wanted me to do it. Uh, pretty much all my family's on the West Coast, so they can enjoy all my games and uh, visit with me, and I can go down for Christmas, you know what I mean? All right, we also stopped by Smithson Valley, the Rangers, and the Steel Knights, and for more on those signings, all you got to do is head over to our website, ksat.com. All right, for better or worse, the Spurs are back on the court tonight after getting blown out by the Bucks the other night. But we are expected to get Wemby back. Take a look at some of these highlights from the other day. Zach Collins gave the Spurs their only lead, 2-0, to zero, and then it was Bucks from there on behind Damian and Lillard. He scored 40 points in that win. And again, once the ball was tipped, it took the Bucks just four minutes to build it into a double-digit lead, and then they cruised from there. Yeah, but we were just asleep, I think, for the first, I'd have to watch the film, but probably four minutes. Um, it didn't help that we couldn't hit a shot, but I think our just mindset from the jump wasn't good. And we have to be more professional, start games better, because we played pretty well the rest of the way. Um, and that, that hurts when, you know, we knew all we had to do was start a little bit better, be more aggressive. Um, instead of getting hit first and having to respond, you know, that, that that's tough. But... We're happy with how we played the rest of the way. All right, tonight it's Spurs versus Doubles. Wemby is expected to return, but Devin Vassell is questionable. You know what would be a good Christmas gift? Okay. A Wemby jersey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see that one coming? <laughs> no, no, I did not. <laughs> yeah, so you were going to say a win. Oh, a win would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the jersey more. Okay. <laughs> a lot more to come. It will be a busy few days on the roads and in the air. So what can you do to avoid some of the travel headaches? Ways to make your trip go smoothly, especially in those long TSA lines in the next half hour.